uh, Madam Chair, the reason why we should be considering a committee resolution, uh, as outlined, as we had said, um, contends that the governor has exceeded his statutory authority <coughs> by ordering uh, the Bureau of Mediation Services to conduct an election of private and independent contractors. Uh, as, as the history that we've already reviewed uh, <coughs> Uh, has said the governor has made an order, an executive order, directing this agency, the Commissioner of Bureau of Mediation Services, to conduct elections to determine whether certain unions shall represent licensed, registered, subsidized family child care. Uh, there's, there's a couple reasons why they not only distribute ballots, they are creating, we contend that there's no legal authorization existing uh, to support these male elections for exclusive representatives of this executive order. And it also raises a serious question of separation of powers. We believe that the executive order that the governor has made, 11-31, violates the separation of powers clause of the state constitution by attempting to exercise lawmaking functions as well as the effect of budgets um, without legislative approval. If we're going to establish a precedent with this, uh, then it is appropriate to look at, at the history of executive orders and determine what in the future direction we want to offer a governor or whether or not there's going to be statutory, uh, some statutory effort during the, this next year's legislative session to change the nature of how you handle executive orders. Um, uh, and I haven't heard that. What I've heard is that this particular issue has risen to this level of, uh, um, I don't know, the, you know, the Watergate tapes or something. And um, I, I just, th that's why I, I talk about the history. Um, because if, if, if the bottom line is, is that uh, a majority of this committee, the majority party feels that uh, this is an issue that rises to this level of separation of powers and, and, and is, is something that is of, of huge significance, uh, um, then I would suggest that uh, uh, there ought to be an historic uh, examination of the use of executive orders. I think the concern for me and why I support the adoption of the resolution is that that to me is the central question. I don't believe that this is a lawful order. And uh, as evidence of that, uh, there was a hearing a week ago Monday in the other body where, on this issue where they did uh, invite the commissioner of the Bureau of Mediation Services, and he did attend. And that question was asked to him, under what statutory authority does he have to conduct the actions that the governor has uh, commanded him or asked him to do in the, in the order? And he. He didn't point to any statute. His response was, well, the governor ordered me to. Now, if that is the standard by which we're going to have public servants whose actions are governed in statute, they're not going to go by the statute, but they're going to go by the order of a governor, regardless of what the powers say in the statute, that is a very troubling precedent.